Hello and welcome to Cat Studio. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I need all the subscribers I can get. I appreciate all of you that have subscribed in the past. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make a mini pocket folio. It's a really cute folio. Uh, can't wait to get started. So let's just start out with our 110 pound cardstock. And we also need some lighter weight cardstock. And today what I'm using is an 80 pound um, cardstock. So we're going to start scoring the base. It's the heavyweight cardstock and it's eight and a half by 11 inch. We're going to cut that down once we get finished here. So inch and a half, four and three quarters, five and a quarter, eight and a half, and nine inches. So then we're gonna take our 85 pound card stock into our scoreboard on the 11 inch side, and we're gonna score it at three inches, six and a half inches and 10 inches. And then we're gonna go over to our trimmer and we're gonna cut is our, our base. This is the heavy pound card stock. And we're gonna cut, cut this on the 11 inch side to 10 and a half inches. And then we're gonna turn that to the short side and cut it at four and a quarter inches. So, yep, you guessed it. We are gonna have two bases. We only need one today. And then we're gonna take our 80, 80 pound cardstock that we just scored at six, uh, three, six and a half, and 10 inches. And we're gonna cut at three and a half inches. <clears throat> so, I like to put my little uh, dimensional tape there so they all come out the same width hopefully <laughs> and then we slide that over cut that at three and a half again and then we slide that over at three and a half make sure that one goes in straight because it doesn't really it grabs right there but barely so three and a half, and that's where I put my tick marks pretty much, where I need the cut line. Actually, I'm gonna check that one again. Okay, so what we wanna do is take those three pieces and we're gonna cut those on the eight and a half side at four inches. twice. So four inches and I did stack all of them together. I have a new blade in this uh, trimmer and then four inches. So that gives us six uh, pages for our stacked waterfall. Make sure we got that right. Okay, very nice. Make sure they're all even. And they are. So once we have all our cutting done, we need one more piece cut at four by three inches. And I think I can use one of my leftover pieces that I had the other day, four and then by three inches. So that is your, your base that we're gonna glue the waterfall on to. So let's fold and crease everything and get started putting this together. So how we fold and crease is towards, we scored it this way. So then we fold and crease towards the bubbled up side. That makes sense, I hope. I kind of like to, uh, you know, just do a little bend before I get to folding them down and make sure they're even, that's important. But sometimes, you know, you put your paper in your scoreboard, it may wiggle on you a little bit. Yeah, 
like this one must have because they're a little bit off. Okay, let's crease that. And hold, and I'll crease that one. Let me crease this end. All right, so this is the, the way the folio goes. This is your closure end. This will close like so. And there you have that. So let's set that to the side for a moment and work on the waterfall. So what you want to do with the waterfall is you have six pieces that have score lines at a half inch. Because we pre-scored those before we cut them out. So we're, I just finger fold them first. So six sheets you got out of that one piece of cardstock. I'll just lay them all on top of each other like so. And then crease all at once. There, it saves me a little bit of time. So then your this base piece that we cut at four by three inches or three by four fits on the back, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this together and then we're gonna glue that into the book. So what I like to do is use my scoreboard to help line things up. It's a good time to check and make sure that you're all even, because if not, you might wanna go back to your, um, maybe your larger uh, trimmer and trim, trim that down. So let's start with some glue. And my favorite glue is Fairly Art Precision Craft Glue. I get that from Amazon. It's a bit expensive to get the big bottle, but it has lasted me for so many projects. I can't even count them all. So what we do is put some glue on that tab, that half inch tab, and then I kind of put that and I, the reason I wipe that with my finger is to not goop up my scoreboard. And then line that up, open up, and give that a nice press. And if you wanted to put something under there, keep the glue off your scoreboard. So then the next piece goes right on top. And then line that up best you can. And you can scooch it out and eyeball it if you wanted to. I just go with lining all this up around the edges and this edge. It's really not going to show that much if it's off a hair. And then give that a good press. And careful of glue being in there because I've gone back and had my pages stuck together. Next one goes on top, and so on. They, they all get glued on the same. So all six get glued, a glue on the tab, and then set on top, evened up in the corner. Be careful of this corner though on this side, it does curl up. So basically you just want down at this end, and then you can eyeball this end here. Yep, it's off just a hair. There we go. And then open that up, press it in. And if you need to take it off and fix it, go ahead and do that. And I'll be back in a moment when I get all these glued on. Okay, once you have glued your stacked waterfall together, let that dry up good. And then we're gonna take and glue the back piece. And usually I mark this with a B, a letter B, so that I know where the back is so I don't get mixed up. But you can figure out where that is, um, I think, without marking it. So glue the whole entire back. Lay your, your, um, lay your base down so that the one score line is on your left. And then the, the gusset is on your right. And this waterfall goes right here. So what we do is we just kind of center it up. 
between the two score lines on either side and top and bottom you can kind of turn it and look and see it doesn't have to be perfect but that back page try and make sure that that is pretty darn close because you're going to cover that with pattern paper and if it's off a little bit it's you're going to see it so there we have that and then give it a good press and again be careful of the glue oozing out there <laughs> and then let that dry and I like to stand mine up usually to let it dry like so and I'm going to go over the mat pieces with you this quickly and then I'll put all that on and bring it back for you to see so what we start with is the base which is front and back front and back here that's four sheets at three by four inches that that four pieces at three inches by four inches so that last piece I will take and I think I already trimmed one piece down uh, when it goes in back here that last piece depending on how you even up those that piece there it may be a little long but this one I think I trimmed it already so it fits nicely in there um, so when you close the book there you have it and this end if you wanted this to be and I might trim it more so in any case the other pieces fit on like so with an eighth inch border around the whole piece maybe a little less so then we've got four pieces like that cut at three by four inches for the base your next uh, mats will be for your pocket and your closure pieces at one and a quarter by four inches you need three of those so inch and a quarter by four inches and then for the spine I cut mine at three eighths by four inches maybe a little bit wider it's usually if I'm going by my rule of a quarter inch smaller for the eighth inch border this should be a quarter inch but I didn't like that so I cut them a little wider so I think that looks good that way so four pieces for the spine you don't have to cover the spine if unless you you know it depends on what you know if you like it that way without the the pattern paper or with either way so then for this cute little book here um, there are 12 sheets at two and three quarters by three and three quarters and the top sheet I will probably see if I have any in my stash to put uh, pattern paper on the top here as well and the inside will be the plain um, the plain mat and again there's a eighth inch border around the whole piece when you once you glue them on so 12 pieces of those I think let's see let's count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven plain pieces and one um, I didn't write that in my notes but one piece of pattern paper for this top or or you can go plain whatever you like so those are the measurements so I hope that was clear enough for you. If not, rewatch the video. I'll lay all these out for you to see. Um, and the spine and the closure mats and the pocket, one side of the pocket, okay? So I put on the base first. We don't, we don't glue this down until all our pattern paper is on. So I'll meet you back here for that. Okay, now that all the pattern paper is on and my inside cardstock paper is on and the back sheet there, okay, we're gonna glue on the pocket. And how we do that is just put a strip of glue here and here, and I think I have too much. And just take those two corners in your fingers and kind of press them in towards each other. And then take your thumb and press that down. And then I would take my 
scoring tool just to press it in a little bit more. So now your folio is complete without, obviously the closure isn't on yet. So we take a negative magnet and a positive magnet. And you, you could also do a ribbon closure if you wanted to and just tie a ribbon around the whole thing. Oops, this way. So what I usually do is I'll take one of my folios and I'll stack it full of photos and whatnot and make sure that it fits. And I know that these, this particular folio with these papers that I've used, the uh, Cartabella cardstock is a little thicker. So I was worried that I wasn't gonna have enough room, but there's plenty of room in these. So what I'm gonna do here is take the sticker paper off of one, of one side of these. Once you put them together, and find the center. You can measure it if you like. And in about, I'm gonna say half inch, quarter inch, maybe in between there, press that down. You could put some glue on that if you like. Take that sticker paper off. So that side is stuck down and then we're gonna stick the other side down. I'm gonna close this book, stand it up, Square up the ends. I leave a teensy bit of space maybe. And then press that in. Make sure you're even on the top and bottom here. And there you have your closure is ready. And then you can go ahead and decorate. So I will do that off camera. So I'll be right back to show you how it looks decorated. Okay, I'm back and this is completed and decorated. I probably wanted a bigger bow here, but that's all I had at the moment. And this was a sticker that I cut in half and stuck it on there. It says, gather the ones you love. Isn't that cute? And then inside I have put a couple of little cards that I cut like two and a half by three and a half inches. And then on the back side, you could put a photo here or on both of these. Just tuck them in that little pocket. And this is the Waterfall, stacked waterfall, and I just have a few stickers in here at the moment. I'll probably put more later on. Um, and I think this turned out really cute. And this back piece I did cut down slightly, so I had a little bit more of a border. And that's this one. So I wanted to show you the rest of the ones that I have made. And these are all made with scraps. And, you know, you can pull all your scraps together and start cutting that up and see what you have. And I was able to make four out of some of the scraps they have from the, I think it was the Cartabella Garden. I'm not sure on that exactly, but I think it was the garden theme, flower garden. So this is the one that I went and put a bunch of photos in here just to make sure that this folio, which all these are measured the same, fit, it all fits in there. And so this one also with the pocket and inserts and then the waterfall folio has different colored um, pages. So just some ideas of how you could decorate, you know, a uh, myriad of things. Uh, this one is pretty plain, but I love the butterflies and I didn't put anything in the pocket yet. And this one has pink um, waterfall pages for your photos. And, and you could, you know, you're gonna have to probably cut down your photos. Uh, this is two and, a, two and three quarters by three and three quarters. So a good two and a half by three and a half photo will fit in here very easily. And the next one is the one I didn't put the closure on yet. I don't know if I will or not. I mean the magnet, I enjoy the moments. And this was from a Cartabella um, six by six pad. The, pa the paper is a little thinner. It's not, Car if you ever used Cartabella, it has a texture to it, uh, the 12 by 12 sheets. This is the smaller pack six by six and it just seems like a different paper to me. It's a little bit thinner. So this one has, again, I only put small 
um, labels in, inside these at the moment. So once they get pictures in there, I might put more. So just some ideas of how you could, you know, decorate. You could put a little journaling card in there if you want to put notes. And uh, so that's it. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. I hope you make a whole bunch of these. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. And I'll be glad to help you. Leave your comments in the comments section. Love to hear from everybody. Hit that subscribe button, like this video, and share it with your friends. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.